Welcome to the IB Thermal Physics Unit, where it is hot. Much like bulls, when you paint them red, they get really hot and angry. And we are going to talk about temperature, Kelvin Celsius scale, internal energy, potential energy, kinetic energy of molecules. So buckle up, my friends. If you take your finger, which is warm, and you put it in ice cold water, which clearly is colder, do you have cold seeping into your finger, or do you have heat leaving your finger and going into the water? What it turns out that we have is that it's the heat or the energy from your warm finger that is flowing out into the colder water. And the definition that you need to write down about temperature is that that difference in temperature determines which way the thermal energy goes. It always goes into the cold, from hot to cold. Write that down. A simpler version is that temperature is a measure of how hot or cold an object is. And that's not very descriptive. But keep in mind, the temperature will always flow from hot to cold, regardless of the size of your object. And it will keep flowing, and flowing, and flowing, and flowing, as long as there is a difference in temperature. And you can probably guess that it's only going to stop until you reach what we call thermal equilibrium. In other words, when one of those objects is going to be the same temperature as the other, which you can imagine when you're swimming in the water, almost always your body's going to be warmer than the body than the body of water that you're swimming in. So you will constantly be losing heat from your body to the swimming pool even though you may feel comfortable in it. Two scales that we're going to use for temperature, that is the Kelvin and Celsius scales. Now we could talk about the Fahrenheit scale, but that is such a stupid scale we won't even bring it in here. Now Celsius, you also might have heard it called centigrade. That's the same thing. Uh, Celsius is maybe good for everyday things like our body temperature and the weather, uh, and that is based on water. Because for Celsius, uh, your water freezes, normal water anyway, at normal pressures, uh, at zero Celsius. And you know that it boils when you're at normal pressures at 100 Celsius. And then they made the rest of the scale based, on, based off of that, which was a little bit unfortunate because then you get some negatives that are difficult to deal with. If you don't want to deal with negatives, you deal with Kelvin because it goes all the way down to zero. There are no negatives, because zero is the lowest temperature possible. That is a lack of molecular motion. You will never have a negative value in Kelvin. If you do, you've done something drastically wrong with your calculations. Now, to convert, you can probably work it out from this scale, that if you're going from Kelvin to Celsius, from zero up to negative 273, you just subtract. 273. If you're going from Celsius up to Kelvin, you do the opposite. You add 273. With that in mind, pause it, see if you can answer this question. Converting your 37 degree body temperature in Celsius, or centigrade, up to Kelvin. That's easy. You just take 37 degrees, add your 273, and you're going to get 310 Kelvin that sounds like a crazy fever, but that's normal in Kelvin. Keep in mind that a change of one degree Kelvin is the exact same thing as a change of one degree Celsius. The size of a degree Kelvin, same as the size of a degree Celsius. Small note, with Celsius, you do put that little weird zero that means degrees for a Kelvin. You don't even have to say degree, and you don't need that little degree symbol. Just leave it as is. Now, my favorite definition of temperature, and it should be yours because I'm a genius, is this definition here of temperature. Take a minute, write this down if you don't have it. And that involves the fact that in every little substance, you've got all these molecules or atoms, and they are all moving around or vibrating if it's a solid, but if it's a liquid or gas, they are physically moving around and swapping places within the substance at different speeds. And if you look at their average, or you take their average kinetic energy, that is going to give us our 
temperature. Some are moving slower, some are moving crazy fast. But you add them all up, you get an average kinetic energy that we measure in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Now, what we're saying up here is that the total internal energy is not just about temperature. It's, it's what we call internal energy is going to equal sum of the potential energy plus the average kinetic energy, which is going to be our temperature. So we've got two substances that are the same temperature. I've got 100 grams of water at zero Celsius. Now it can be in liquid state, and it's just starting to freeze, but it can still be all liquid. And you can also have 100 grams of ice that's completely solid, but just starting to melt at zero degrees Celsius. Now they have the same mass and the same temperature. And so, they then would have the same average Ke because of this temperature. However, if we asked how do their internal energies compare, this water has a higher internal energy. You may ask why. That's a good question. Because it's in a liquid state, and liquids have a higher potential energy than solids, at least of the same substance. So we can say that this has a higher potential energy compared to the water. And so its internal energy is a little bit higher because of that difference in potential energy. Just to sum up this intro, let's look at some terms that you want to make sure you distinguish. Uh, temperature. Make sure you know that is going to be the average kinetic energy per molecule in a substance. Internal energy is going to be the sum of the kinetic energy of all the molecules plus the potential energy of all the molecules happening in there. Now, thermal energy is the one tricky one. That is what's known as a transfer of energy. Or thermal energy or heat represents energy leaving somewhere. So when you're talking about heat, you have to have a temperature difference and some heat going from the hot object into the cold object. And so it can, people often get in trouble because they'll incorrectly say that an object has internal energy or it has heat. It's more the fact that the object has a high internal energy. Oh, sorry, it cannot have thermal energy. Internal energy, it can have lots of Ke and lots of Pe, but it can't have thermal energy or heat because that's going to be a transfer of stuff. Now, let's say we've got uh, two things. I've got a bowl of lava that's at, I don't even know what temperature the lava's at. Let's say it's at 500 degrees Celsius. And then I've got a giant drum of lava at 500 degrees Celsius. Which one has more internal energy? They have the same temperature. Clearly, this one does because it has more mass. And so it's going to have more Ke because of the Ke of all those molecules in there, even though they might all have the same average Ke per molecule temperature-wise. And it also has more Pe because there's just lots more of it. Now let's say I've got a drum of lava, but then I've also got a giant iceberg the size of a small city that clearly is at about zero degrees Celsius, but it weighs a bazillion kilograms. Now, which one has more internal energy? As you are probably a clever person, you will realize that the iceberg has more internal energy than the barrel of lava, simply because of its large mass. Even though it has a cold temperature, it still has some Ke, and there's a bazillion times more atoms, and it still has some Pe, and that does all add up to give the very large object more internal energy, even though its temperature is clearly lower.